Hello, welcome back. It's time to look at creating a new song. So to create a new song, there's a couple ways to go about it. The first is when you're on the start page, when you first open Studio One like this, you can push the create a new song button, obviously, or at any time when you're in a different song or on this page or anywhere, you can go to the file menu and choose new song. So something I wanna mention is that before you create a new song, it's important to close whatever other session you had open before. So we had that Twilight Waters session open. It would be important to close that before you start a new song. The reason is that Studio One has the ability to have multiple songs open at one time. So over here in this song tab, you could have say two or three songs open at once and there'd be a little drop down menu that would let you choose which one you wanna look at. And that's cool, but it actually takes up more computer power to run those multiple songs at one time than it is to run just one song. So unless it's for a specific purpose, which there is specific circumstances where you'd want to do that, like if you wanted to copy settings from one song to another, you could have both open at once and just kind of flip between them. But for the most part, you're going to want to have just one song open so that you can dedicate all your computer's resources to that. And another note on that is that when you're working uh, in Studio One, you'll want to have every other application on your computer closed, if you possibly can, because making music on the computer takes up a lot of computer power and processing and RAM, and it's important that we dedicate everything we have to doing that. So if the computer's trying to split itself between multiple applications, you might find you get some problems in Studio One because it doesn't have enough power to run. So whenever we're working on our own music, Good to keep the focus there and close any other applications that might um, get in the way or take away from our computing power. Okay, so let's create our first session here. We're gonna go to the Create a New Song button and let's click that. That brings up this dialog box, the New Song dialog box. So what we first see is Styles. This is a set of templates actually. A template is basically a pre-configured set of tracks uh, that you can use that can save you some time. So some things here would be like a band recording with microphones. This is like 16 separate tracks to record a whole live band. There's house and techno music, a variety of other things you can find here. But honestly, I've never used one of these and I never will. I much prefer to create my own templates and do everything from scratch essentially because then it can be customized to be exactly how you want it as opposed to trying to fit what you're doing uh, into the ideas that someone else had. So even though this is presented to us every time, I'm not going to use it. I would suggest that you create your own templates as well, and we're going to take a look at doing that in an upcoming video. So moving along, we see some interfaces here. If you remember from one of my earlier videos, I mentioned I have an audio interface, which is basically just a little box that allows you to take microphones and instruments and get that audio into the computer. Again, I don't ever use these. Um, that doesn't really apply to the kind of music that I'm making, so uh, it doesn't matter to me. And if you don't have an interface, it's pointless to even look at it. The next is this user section. Now this is interesting. Yours probably only has empty song, but I've got two others that I've created here um, before. And we're gonna create our own template in an upcoming video, and that's where it will appear is in this user tab. And that's important to know because once we have a template, we're gonna to wanna to use that template whenever we start a new song, and this is where you're gonna find it. So moving over, let's run down the options we have here. First is our song title. Now, titling a song is an interesting process. It's kinda of one of my favorite parts of making a song, honestly, but I can't ever really think of the title until a song's done because, yeah, the song is gonna feel a certain way, and to title it before I know what it sounds like seems kind of strange to me. So I usually just give it like a temporary title. So that can be anything that's going on. Like right now I'm wearing some HD 650 headphones. So I would just call it 650 or I could call it, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to rename it anyways. Whatever's at the top of your head, it just is a title to get started with. Below that we have um, this directory. This is where our song is going to get saved to. Now hopefully this is already set up to be your songs folder, but you can double check that by pushing the three dots. And that takes me to songs. And this should be inside my Studio One folder songs. And this shows me what I've got. Now you remember, 
we made this Lydian folder inside here. So that's actually where I'm gonna to wanna to save my songs, not directly in here, but in the Lydian folder. So coming into the Lydian folder, I see the demo session that we downloaded, which is Twilight Waters. And I'm just gonna select this directory as where I'm gonna save my song. Okay, so our first option here is sample rate. Now sample rate is similar to frame rate. If you know about frame rates regarding movies and video, where a video can be taken at 24 frames a second or 30 frames or 60 frames a second, and then it's played back and it gives the illusion of motion. So here in the real world, we have sound waves, which are waves of air pressure that hit our eardrums. And these aren't broken up into zeros and ones, little bits like in a computer. The computer needs to break it up into little bits so that it can work with it and it breaks it up at a speed of 44,100 times every second. It takes a sample at a rate of 44,000 times every second. So that's what our sample rate is. How fast are we taking samples of audio? So this has some options from 44.1 up to 192, and there's a lot of science that goes behind this, but for our purposes, we're gonna keep it at 44.1, and that's totally gonna to be sufficient, not a problem at all. Below that is resolution. Again, we're gonna talk about this in depth in another video. Right now, let's keep it at 32. This gives us um, the most flexibility when we're working inside Studio One. Our time base is how we want to display how far into the song we are, where our position is in the song. It's good to use bars because then we can keep everything on an even grid. Uh, it's a very musical way to work. But you have some other options here, like measuring it in seconds, which is just standard time, or samples or frames if you're working with video. So we have song length. Now, this really doesn't matter. We can change this at any point. This is just a default initial song length that if we if, say we set this for, for two seconds, well, that would be a problem. It, our song would not have any room to write anything in it. But five minutes is definitely sufficient. And if you do need to extend it, is easy to do later on. So I just leave this at five minutes. Our standard tempo, 120. Again, this is so easy to change. It's pointless to even change it here unless you know for sure what your tempo is gonna be ahead of time. Like you're making a specific genre of electronic music and it has a certain tempo that they write it at. You could set that here instead of setting it in the session if you wanted to do that. Time signature is just the same, 4-4. It can be changed later, nothing to worry about. This is important to leave ticked. Stretch audio files to song tempo. When we import new files like loops into our session, we want them to match the tempo that the session is at. So this is what that option does, and we're gonna leave that ticked. Play overlaps is an interesting concept that you'll see when you start to work with audio when you have two, tra um, two events that are overlapping each other, then usually one event will cut the other off, but you could have them play simultaneously. For me, this is of no use, I never use it, but if it's something that interests you, it could be interesting to experiment with. Okay, so that's pretty good to create our new song, so we can just go ahead and push OK. Now we've got a fresh song page where we can begin composing or doing whatever we're gonna do, so let's continue on in the next video.